Hey everybody, Jay Shockblast here, and uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty stoked about some Battlefield 4 finally announced last night. I'm uh, joined today here by Iconic Wally. Uh, how you doing today, man? Doing pretty good. Thank you for uh, bringing me on. I appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. One of my uh, favorite people to play Battlefield with. I, I always have to say that anytime we talk about Wally. Uh, he's definitely carried me through many of my videos here uh, on the Shockblast Media YouTube channel, so... Always fun to to get in with you. So, I'm sure you've watched the video probably as many times as I have. It's uh, only single player, but I think it's uh, a lot to be excited about. Uh, what were your initial impressions, kind of watching that video the first time? Uh, the the first time I pulled it up was was actually last night, and I was live streaming when I did it, and uh, it looks fantastic. It really does. Uh, you can't you can't argue that they are definitely going for a quality approach on this one. Uh, if you compare it to Battlefield 3 and the way they first showed it on the campaign, it also looked great. You know, both both campaigns look look definitely like they've put some time and effort into them. And I think that hopefully, if uh, the campaign is any kind of correlation to the multiplayer, it should be very interesting to play. Definitely very interesting. Now, how much you? I'm sure you ran through the single player at least once or twice, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I mean, I think uh, they're kind of going with the bad company kind of format here. It seems like they've got, you know, a solid squad of guys that you're going to want to care about. Uh, they're really making a big deal about the human element of the single player. Um, I can already tell that, you know, these are going to be characters we like. Uh, did you kind of get that impression too? Yeah, you're definitely spot on when I say you, they're going for the human approach. I would say that, that BC2 and, and BC1's campaign were more in a humorous setting, although like somewhat toned seriously, uh, but it but it was definitely more humorous. I would say Battlefield 3's campaign was definitely serious. They they looked for the human element. They showed that uh, overall conflicts generally are something you want to avoid between two superpowers. And I think in in this one too, uh, I believe there's a portion in the in the showing that they cut the guy's leg off because it was trapped under rubble. Right. Uh, that that right there. I was watching that, and I was like, I was like, please don't don't do it. Don't cut his leg off. Like, don't do it. <laughs> you know. And and generally, when you get an effect like that from a video game or any kind of media, you know you're going to be emotionally you know, involved with it. You're going to be attached there. So, what do you think about going to Battlefield Four after Battlefield Three, and not maybe back to Bad Company? Uh, I think that I think that they're going the right way with it. I think that the Bad Company games were a good uh, stepping stone in a sense. But you know, I played 1942, Battlefield Two, uh, 2142, Vietnam. I played most of them, and uh, I can say that the the Bad Company games were a good idea to get a good single player standpoint from. But in reality, people want to see these, these hardcore, uh, in-your-face, single-player campaigns, especially from a military game. They don't want to see some humoristic approach towards it. They want to see something they can relate to, something that they can say, this could be happening you know, down the line in the next 15, 10 years, or something like that. We could see things like this happening on the news. And uh, I think that that is the proper way to go about it. They want to attach the player to the game through serious elements and serious tones, I, I think that uh, getting off Battlefield or Bad Company 3 is, is a good idea. I really do. So it seems like they're also going to start going with like that yearly approach, kind of like Call of Duty. It kind of frees it up for maybe the next time around going to Bad Company 3. And uh, supposedly there's a, a TV show coming out in support of, uh, in support of it, so I would, I would imagine that would make sense. Right. I mean... So I, for, as far as the yearly games go, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm I'm on the I'm on the fence about that approach. Really am. Yeah, I mean they didn't go yearly this time around because uh, you know three came out what uh, October of eleven. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was two years in between. I think that's a pretty fair length of time. They supported it really well. Uh, you know the four expansion packs. I mean, I know not everybody was really thrilled with close quarters, but the other ones were pretty solid. Yeah, I agree. I think that I think that in order. At least in personal opinion, I would say that the competitive community pretty much falls in with you. I'd say that, that close quarters is interesting, but it's more of a – it's not really a cheap COD knockoff because you can't say that about any game really, but but it, it isn't Battlefield. Battlefield is big maps, vehicles, it, you know, large engagements. They're not meant to be close quarter shooters in my opinion. Do you think they learned their lesson there for to not like – 
go after that Call of Duty crowd and just to to be Battlefield? I I think that I think that any successful game wants to be more successful than the top competition. If you look at MMOs, everyone wants to beat WoW, and in the sense of FPSs, everyone wants to be or beat Call of Duty. I think that they will try to reapproach the close quarter aspect, but I think they'll do it a little bit more intelligently. They won't just give you close quarter maps and say, "Here you go." They'll they'll spice it up. They might make them a little bit more open. Uh, might allow for multiple levels within the map itself, something like that. I think they're really going to change the approach. So uh, the timing of the game being released seems like it's right in line with uh, the launch of the new next gen consoles. Um, I'm assuming that you're going to be going with the next Xbox. Definitely, w- without a doubt. Seeing seeing that uh, a bunch of people uh, stream it on the PC, get to play those big maps, uh, better graphics, uh, all those things, in combined with the fact that PC generally has better support of a bigger community, much larger m- larger competitive scene. I think that uh, having the next gen Xbox kind of bridges the gap slightly. But I still think the best way to go for any game would be like this, especially, I would say, PC is the best bet. Yeah. I mean, I I definitely... I'm going to end up with both next-gen consoles, obviously. um, But I I always have been a a Xbox First kind of guy, and I definitely foresee myself uh, getting an Xbox First. I don't think I'm going to get it on the PS4 right away this time. I I did it for the PS3, but I never, ever play it, except for, like, one day during that week of exclusivity so that speaking of that I, I really hope that's something that goes away this time around because mm-hmm. it was I, I just felt like you kind of throw off your fan base by by having one crowd having it a week before the other it seems kind of pointless I mean you know coming from coming from the different perspective I would say that um, it, it does offer consoles something to look forward to like you know in a sense that LPS3 gets it first but the difference is, is, is coming from the streaming community, especially when it comes to Battlefield. Uh, I know some of the PC guys were set off about that. The Xbox definitely was set off about that. But I, I, I would almost believe the fact that if it happened to the PS3, they would be set off by the fact that if Xbox or PC got their DLC first. I really agree. I think they should just release it all at the same time, give all the consoles a fair shot at it, and, and that way it, it doesn't put that you know console uh, flame war nonsense you know, it doesn't involve that into their game. Yeah, and and to be fair, I I feel exactly the same way about Call of Duty. It it drives me nuts that you know, and I, being an Xbox guy, I just don't think it's fair that you know Xbox gets it a whole month before everybody else. It's just yeah. you're kind of telling one fan that you know they're better than the other. It just doesn't seem right. No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100. So so Frostbite three is uh, what they're saying is going to be in this one, and it's kind of strange. I, it's almost like Frostbite 2.5, but I guess they can call it whatever they want. Right. Uh, considering they they claim that they didn't even come close to using the potential of Frostbite 2. Um, are you excited for more destructivity? And you know the rumors are that more buildings are going to be able to come down. Yeah, I I think that coming from BC2 and going over to Battlefield 3, there was a letdown there. There was a letdown that uh, I understand that BC2 had a set number of buildings and. And within those set number of buildings, every single one of them could be dropped. But that then again saying, like, there was only, like, four or five different building models. In, in BF3, there's multiple building models. There's there's high-rises. There's things like this. So it really you really couldn't expect them to deliver that kind of scale in, in a game with the current hardware we play on. Now, with the next gen, um, I, I really do expect that they will deliver to their fullest. I think that if someone's in a four-story building on the top floor you don't want to go all the way up there you just put c4 around it or you know, rockets tanks whatever you want just drop that entire building i think that that is a creative and and definitely intuitive way to approach uh, an fps at least a modern fps with next gen it seems like you were kind of alluded to it earlier uh we're going to have it opened up to the you know up to 64 man maps i mean have you ever been in a 64-man map? Have you played it on PC before? I've I've never played BF3 on PC, but I've played the older ones on on PC, and uh, I I'll, if if I get the option to do it, I'll do it a few times. But yeah. um, I always shied away. That's just personal preference. But I think that having that option there to play in mayhem like that and have a great time, I think that that will attract a lot of people and a lot of people. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, obviously the, the popular one on all three platforms is Operation Metro, and um, pretty much when I do play a PC, which is rare, uh, the only time I ever play is I go into a 64-man Metro, and it, it's just insane. It's literally just a frag fest, yeah. and uh, it, you're right. It, it, I don't know how I feel about 64-man. I mean, even on the bigger maps, it just seems like it's kind of spread out, or it's even if it is spread out, it doesn't seem like... It seems like you're running into people, like, way too fast. Yeah. Uh, but they do have medium-sized maps. How do you feel about maybe adding, you know, 16 on 16? Um, I believe I believe it was uh, Homefront that did uh, 14 on 14, right? Something like that? They, they upped that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was about 28 players. And, and you know, when you, when you think about a, a small increase like that, it, it's not that big on paper, really. Just, but once you get into the actual game and start feeling it, uh, you know, 16 on 16, that's a whole extra squad on the ground in any of those maps. You know? Exactly. So so you're definitely going to see a lot more intensity. I, I think that a majority of the games I will play will be 32-man servers. You might go to 48-man, depending. But I, I'll probably stick in the 32 range just for the, the safety of it. Cool. Now, uh, one of the things that I noticed, uh, and I know that other people are talking about, uh, there were two big things that kind of stuck out in the uh, the 17 minute trailer that some of you are watching right now we're talking over it um, number one I didn't really notice any suppression I don't know if that was just because it was you know a demo um, and I also noticed that they were able to go back and forth from iron sights to ACOG um, I think both are, are uh, really awesome you know additions or subtractions if you will right I mean from what I understand of it, it's that the way Battlefield 3 was released originally, the suppression was there, but it was very minimal. You wouldn't notice it immediately uh, if someone started shooting at you. You'd notice it over time, and it, it would become more of a hindrance, less of an annoyance. But when, when they patched it about six months ago, it, it's more now of a, at least in the competitive scene, it's it's a skill killer. It really is. You, you can't get... You can't expect to drop more than three or four people if they're in front of you if they're missing their shots because the only time you get suppressed is if they miss. Now, from what I understand of it, you get suppressed if they hit you now. And I think that mm. that's probably the best way to go about it. I wouldn't say remove the concept entirely. I think they need to revise it. Um, as far as the ACOG, the iron sights go, that was introduced in Medal of Honor. And I never had an issue with it. I never ran uh, dual sight guns like that. But I do think it's a cool concept to have them both there to be able to switch between range and, and close range if you wanted to on the fly. I think that's a great addition. Sweet. And I, I also, um, from one of the videos, I think it was Level Cap Gaming, uh, did a video. They were actually at the uh, the event last night in San Francisco. And uh, he mentioned something about the way that spotting is done. Uh, there being a little bit of a change. This time, you know, you can't just spam the back button. Uh, you're actually going to see your hand go off of the gun and press something on your like jacket before you actually spot somebody how do you feel about that i mean i i know that the the core community uh has no problem with the spotting mechanic uh it is a little gimmicky at times where if someone smokes you can spot through smoke um you can spot through uh, debris sometimes you can even spot through buildings that that's gimmicky in the sense that it's not uh properly working I think that that is something that hardcore players are really going to enjoy, the fact that the spotting is just more in time to uh, you can't just sit there and sit on your back button. Uh, and I have no problem with that at all. It's just another mechanic that a lot of people are just going to have to adapt to, myself included. So now let's get into some of the rumors that we've uh, we've seen pop up. We haven't been confirmed. Um, well, some of them maybe I guess they've mentioned. Uh, the first one I think has been mentioned, but I don't think it's really confirmed, is dynamic weather. I know they've talked about it before, uh, introducing you know weather to, so, to some of the maps, where uh, you can go play, let's say, um, Caspian Border, and uh, the you know one time you play through and it's just clear day, and you know the next time you play through it's you know after uh, like dawn, uh, like so it's starting to get dark out and maybe it's raining. Uh, what do you think about? It adding weather and times of day and stuff like that into uh, the multiplayer aspects. I mean, all that really is it, when you get that deep down into it is, is aesthetic value. That's all it is. It, it, it's really the same game. They're just putting, you know, dressing on top of it. I think that when they talked about doing that for BF3, I was really looking forward to it. I said, you know, that'd be great in the middle of a desert map. 
all of a sudden a sandstorm will pop up. You won't be able to see anything. I, I thought that was a great concept. Um, but if they actually come through and do with it this time, which I think they have the ability to do it, without a doubt, I think it'll be another great addition to uh, you know an already looking pretty stellar looking game. I could see myself backing out of like rain maps though. Like that's not necessarily something that interests me too much. And I know that a lot of times like the glare from the sun in the game kind of uh, annoys me. But I mean, I totally get that they're going with realism. But uh, in multiplayer, is it? Do you really care about realism, or do you just want to kind of play? Well, I think that that there's a there's a fine line. There's I think there's two different multiplayer players in a sense. There's there's people that join it to get a get the whole game experience. You know, they play the single player. They also want to get a feel of the multiplayer. And then there's people that play it, uh, you know, on the competitive level or, or, you know, more than just casual. And I think that the competitive players, regardless of what they get, they, they won't care. Either. Um, but I think that uh, I I would want it, definitely. I think that it's something that, that they could do and something that they should do. I need to learn how to uh, put my cell phone on mute when I do these things. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry about that. Claptrap interrupting. Um, <laughs> so, um, just to totally threw me off my game there. Now, uh, they added air superiority to uh, this latest DLC on Battlefield 3. Um, I've seen some rumors popping up that we might have uh, some ocean warfare, you know, some something along those lines, only uh, maybe in boats. Uh, what do you think about something like that? I, I, from what I understand of it, the only game that that had the level of, of you know a destroyer, an aircraft carrier, a submarine, and a battleship was 1942, uh, back when they first released it. And I think that adding uh, a sea superiority or you know wh whatever they would want to call it, I think that's just another addition. Uh, tank superiority in Armored Kill was a good addition. Kind of gimmicky. Played it for a little bit, enjoyed it. Didn't didn't really get. They I don't know. It, it just wasn't all there for me. Air superiority, on the other hand, is, is something that I find myself going back to. Play. I you know all those jets in the air, regardless of how many heat seekers hit you, I still think that is a lot. Of so I think it I think it could be a good addition. I, I was awfully proud of myself uh, the day it came out on Xbox. I uh, I was in one of your games and it happened to shift over to an air superiority map and um, I uh, I might have gone 0 and 16 but I, I did my best uh, I think <laughs> I think you know that I'm not exactly a pilot in in any game <laughs> uh, yeah so um, what is there anything that you haven't seen yet that you'd like to see I'd like to see um, if anything I, I want to see more customization and I know this is more of a, a personal and, and probably another aesthetic thing, but uh, the way they gave it to us in Battlefield is that you could change camos, and, and that's kind of cool. But I, I don't know. I, I like the fact that uh, whenever you play a game, you get to be your own soldier, so if you want to equip your own vest, you want to wear a gas mask, whatever it is, you should have that ability to do that. You know, just give it a personal touch. Uh, that, that's something I would like to see. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, if, if, it, if it's there or not, I'm still going to get the game. But I, I think that if they if they put in that customization uh, in depth level, I think it would be great. That would be fantastic. You're backing up, right? So China, I think, is possibly going to be the uh, the enemy in this game. Right. Are there any? Uh, are you familiar with any Chinese weapons that could be in this? Uh, from what I understand of it, the, the Chinese uh, have developed since since. Post Cold War era have developed past the, their Soviet weaponry. They don't they don't use the standard AK models anymore. They use uh, I believe it's like the, the type weapons like Type 88, Type uh, Type 98, stuff like that. Uh, the QBZ assortment of weaponry. Um, I think that uh, it could be interesting to see how uh, not necessarily the gaming community, but more or less the, the society in America and of course across the seas reacts to a a you know sort of a, a grand battle between two, two superpowers especially when things we're not necessarily shaky with China, China right now but you know things like this could uh, could definitely get up there in the news I, I think that um, bringing in new guns is, is always great from what I understand it's set in 2020 so we'll see a little bit of futuristic guns possibly an XM8 on the American side. Uh, possibly some more futuristic weapons, stuff like that. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they put in there. 
Sweet, yeah, I'm uh, definitely intrigued. So, you know, Battlefield 3 obviously is winding down. Last DLC came out. Um, what do you think was missing from Battlefield 3? Like, what what did they possibly get wrong this time around? I think I think the one thing that they that they really missed, and, and of course hindsight's 2020, but but they they tried to go off a formula that uh, didn't really make sense. Uh, Battlefield has always been a successful franchise and will always be a successful franchise. But they attempted, in my opinion, to copy too many of the Call of Duty aspects. Um, you know, they, they, they didn't go with their core game mode. CTF has always been a core game mode for them. Uh, those, those big, big, large open maps have always been what Battlefield is about, and they didn't really deliver that initially. Um, you know, I think that if they just stick to what they're good at, and and then try to get a little bit creative, maybe at the end or somewhere in the middle, not at the beginning. I think they'll do completely fine, and I won't have any kind of issues. With this, this one. What about from a, a competitive perspective? I think a lot of people have been pretty disappointed in their support of you know esports. I know Battlefield is kind of lagging behind, say like Call of Duty and you know Halo and all of those uh, you know big first person shooters that are represented, you know, a little bit better in, like, the MLG aspect of things. Right. Well, uh, MLG recently dropped, um, they dropped Halo recently. And oh, okay. And they picked up Call of Duty. Uh, I don't see Battlefield getting picked up. I really don't. Not by, not by MLG. It's just, and the, and the main reason for that is MLG is mainly uh, the states, and uh, from what I understand of it is, is Battlefield 3 is very competitive uh, in Europe. Um, it, it's still competitive here in the States, but at least on the consoles, we don't get that much support. The match system was integrated too late. Uh, you know, all sorts of you know, different different problems came up. And they, they, they addressed them, but they took too long to do it. Another thing that killed it was the uh, mythical Virgin Gaming Tournament. <laughs> that, was a, that, was a, that was a big killer of the competition scene, at least on the Xbox. It's huge. It's still the the butt of all jokes. Yeah, we you know we solved the loss of uh, a lot of really good competitive teams. A lot of Halo pros came over. A lot of Call of Duty pros came over. Uh, they came over for about six seven months, and then you know basically after nothing was said for that period of time, they left. You know, it doesn't help. Yeah. Now, um, Medal of Honor Warfighter had a clan support system, and I obviously didn't get too much into that, but. I mean, obviously, Dice worked a little bit with uh, Danger Close on that. How did that work out, and do you think that's something that they could kind of draw off of? I, I think that it's a good idea. Iconic played uh, that pretty pretty extensively. I think her overall record was like sixty one and six, and we're still ranked, I think, like third or fourth in the world. Not playing for you know four or five months. So I think that uh, it was a great idea to, to integrate it. It just it just didn't have a big enough community. If they if they do something at release in line with that, just give the clans options to play each other, regardless of leaderboard ranking. Just give them the option to play each other, um, and then maybe give leaderboard a little bit later down the road, and then maybe some incentive to play. Uh, I think that was great. But as long as they just give it in the beginning, there won't be any issues. Because if they they show the support in the beginning. They're not just going to abandon the project. You know, and I, I think Dice has been pretty pretty good about not abandoning things. Definitely. Now um, we talked about what they got wrong. What did they get right with Battlefield Three? What is uh, what do you want to see them carry over? I, I would like to see them carry over the the fact that they they do hand out regular patches. Um, I do like that. I do like the fact that the community does get supported. Although a majority of the things that they do nerf or do buff don't necessarily need it. Um, you know, the FAMAS and the USAS uh, back in the pre-patch days, I would say definitely those, those need a nerf. But some of the things that don't make very much sense are the stinger doesn't make sense, uh, removing chopper chopper flares. That, that really doesn't make sense. I understand it's, it's a balancer, but if you're not exceptionally good in the chopper now, you cannot fly it. And that, that's basically what it's the same thing. Especially with the new DLC in that... Uh the vehicle that has the anti-air. Yeah, that that thing's anti-everything. It, I don't. <laughs> it, it, it takes out tanks, takes out air vehicles, takes out infantry. Like, I mean, I mean, it's a great vehicle. It's a lot of fun, but um, I think that what they need to do really is 
is allow themselves to have testing servers for their patches. I think that that's maybe me being too hopeful, but I think if they integrated something like that where they ask people from both communities, the competitive and the casual community, say, hey, look, we want you to take a look at this patch before we release it, come play on these servers, check them out, tell us what you think, and then we'll go from there. I think if they did something like that, they'd see a lot better support. So the community is obviously really important in Battlefield. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about how the community, how your interaction with the community has been. You've got a live stream, uh, I Star Stream on Twitch. Everybody can check it out in the comments or the uh, description below 